My name is Kwabunachi and Chahini Boati. Many thanks for joining us here on News Desk to our very first story. Now, as Ghana joins the world in celebrating the Day of Consumer Rights, the debate on the need for a consumer protection law in the country is on once more. Now, many are of the view the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission is unable to fully execute its mandates due to interference from government, hence the need for a law that ultimately seeks the interest of the ordinary Ghanaian. But the real question is, what will be the real relevance of the law, particularly seeing how difficult it is to already enforce some of the most simplest of laws in the country? Uh, let's get on to the phone lines now and try and have a conversation around this. And Kofi Kapito is the Executive Director of the Consumer Protection Agency. He's joining me on phone now with some thoughts on this issue. Mr. Kapito, good morning. Many thanks for your time on News Desk. Uh, good morning. So how are you? Right. I'm um, very well. Thank you. But the, the very first thing I even want to ask, just before we delve into this issue, is uh, I, I know that yourself, you were in court. I'm speaking of the Consumer, uh, Pro Consumer Protection Agency. You were in court. Uh, over this tariff adjustment by the uh, various uh, uh, agencies, I'm speaking of the Ghana Water Company as well as the Electricity Company of Ghana. Uh, can, can you bring us up to speed as far as uh, this particular case is concerned? Well, the case is still in court, and uh, we've been in court several times because uh, the parties uh, were trying to uh, say that there was no need for the case to be heard, uh, but uh, the last time we went to court was about, almost about two weeks ago. Uh, the decision was given in our favor that uh, we should go on to the merits of the case. Uh, so I think uh, the first time we go on to the main uh, issue will be Friday coming. So uh, as far as I can say, we are still in court. Oh. Let's now come to uh, today. I mean, a day many people are very keen on. We are celebrating the Day of Consumer Rights all over the world. Uh, zeroing in on Ghana and the work of the PRC, how, how would you assess their performance, the Public Utilities and Regulatory let's not, Commission? Let's not make it a PRC issue. Mm. It's regulators, uh, people who are mandated for them to make sure that your rights as a consumer is well served. So I don't want to... Do and and, and uh, I, I understand that, but uh, is that a mandate you feel they are clearly seeing out? Uh, I would say the glass is half, uh, half full. Uh, because we cannot have uh, a nation where uh, mandates are not executed to its uh, best performance. Uh, but I would not say that they haven't been doing certain things they have, but like their song goes, they've done their best, but their best is not good enough. What do you think is the biggest challenge of the Consumer Protection Agency? I, I'm speaking well, not, of the, not, the Public Utilities Regulatory let's Commission. Let's not make it the agency. Let's, let's say the, the protection of the consumer in Ghana. Okay, so what, 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 is the, what is the biggest challenge in that? The biggest challenge is the fact that the Consumer Rights Bill has it been passed. Fortunately, I would say uh, kudos to uh, the, his Excellency and his cabinet, who has approved the uh, uh, the bill in cabinet, uh, now the bill rests in the bosom of the Ministry of Trade, a department called the Domestic Trade, uh, and I think they are the ones who are dragging their feet a little bit. Mm. But uh, I engage the Minister uh, Honourable Spiel Gabra, and I can I can say that with all certainty that. He is also very, very much interested that when I engage him, he didn't understand why the department was delaying. So we are waiting for the department to now send it to parliament for us to look at it, how it's going to be passed into law. Mm. Like I said, cabinet has already approved it. Okay, so it's good you speak of the consumer rights bill. And now the question on the minds of many is how relevant will this bill even be once it's passed into law? How relevant will it be? I mean, we've seen the many bills that have become laws that... I mean, enforcing them has become a bit of a problem. So, would this not just add to the numbers? Hey, would it? Let me ask you a question. Mm. Why do you stop at the traffic light when you get the, the light is red? Well, because the law says you should stop. Indeed. So, if you're a consumer, you know that you have uh, this uh, information at your disposal, whereby nobody has the right to disenfranchise you as a consumer. Why would you allow that to happen? As an, as an individual consumer, your most powerful weapon is your money. If somebody disrespects you, you don't do business with them. 
I'm listening, Mr. Hello. Capito. I'm listening. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just saying. So, basically, uh, laws are made, yes, to be enforced by regulators. And also, the citizenry should be able to also to say that this is my right. It is my right to do A, B, C, D. It's as simple as that. I mean, I'm not going to fight your right for you until you fight it yourself. But if the law in Ghana says that everybody who is 18 years and of sound mind is allowed to vote. How can anybody disenfranchise anybody who is 18 years and of a sound mind to vote? So that is basically what the law says. Mm. So you are you will be given the, the information yourself. The law says that uh, this is how things you go. If you don't have it, if you have any redress, you have the right to go to court as, as we are in court. I don't understand why Ghanaians always feel some individual should carry on what is their best for them also to enforce it. Okay, so, so then if that's the case, then really what's, what's the point? Because already we have uh, people and agencies like yourself going to court to challenge certain things already. Now, if we are to bring in a law that is just going to give us information or give us a framework as to how things are supposed to play out and then say, well, if you're unsatisfied with, if you are dissatisfied with A or B or C, you can head to court, then really what's the point? There's, there's a point in a sense that every country has what, has what is called either a consumer commissioner, a consumer commission. That's just like you have the strikes, just like you have uh, other agencies. Uh, when you feel that your rights are not being adhered to, the human rights courts are there, all these agencies, it is the law that is made by Ghana. So, yes, if a commission is, is put in place, as it pertains in anywhere in the world, who will have the mandate and the power to ensure that regulators adhere to mandate given to them, what is wrong with it? Mm. Mr. Capito, wh when do you see this law uh, coming into fruition? Uh, ha, 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 ha. That's a million dollar question. Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, for, for, know, for, for we journalists, what, for instance... What we... I can tell you is, what I can tell you is, I have promised by the President, His Excellency, that if it gets to his table by even 12 o'clock in the afternoon, he will sign it before close of business day. So it is left for you, the media, and the people of Ghana to ask your parliamentarians that how come they are not calling for the bill to the floor? Okay. Uh, uh, already, already we are aware that there are quite a number of bills that are uh, still uh, in Parliament being debated upon. I mean, for instance, the Right to Information Bill has been in Parliament for quite a while now. And we are still trying to push that agenda so that we uh, that particular bill is passed into law. So if you are saying we should add this to that, I would say, well, it might take a while. Don't you agree? Let me ask you a question. Can you imagine uh, you and your colleagues in the media making 10 minutes every day of your time to talk about the package of the consumer bill for Ghanaians to be aware that that is very, very important? The fact that you mention it one, or you leave it to the parliamentarian, I mean, if nobody's going to push them, you, you think they will care? As you said, there are many, many, many bills that they need to consider. That's why we have interest groups. That is why we have made it our business to always go and ask what is happening, where has it reached, and all those things. The media needs to get involved. The media needs to ask questions as to why things are not done. That is what media in other jurisdictions, that I am very, very familiar with, that not that it sits on the on the well clearly that's what that's what we are doing this morning no, but I'm just, I, and, and, mm. and i'm very glad that you are doing that this morning but what i'm saying is after talking to me i will hope that you could go to the speakers uh, uh to the speaker of the house or maybe members of the trade uh, uh select committee on trade and ask them what is the what is the delay how come are they aware that the bill is back somewhere is somebody talking to them they are going somewhere so uh, I'm looking at the final thing before we go. Beyond the media doing this agenda, doing uh, pushing this agenda, the Consumer Rights Protection Agency, uh, which other role do you plan on playing to ensuring that this bill becomes uh, a law and, uh, in essence, protecting the interest of the many consumers of this country? Uh, I don't know whether you listen. I mentioned that the fact that we've engaged... Oh, yes, I, 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 did, I did hear we, that. We've, we've, we've actually managed for the cabinet to have an approval of the bill, the president has promised that if it comes to his table, 
it would sign it. I don't expect what else you want us to do. We've been pushing, mm. and we still keep pushing. Right. Mr. Capito, many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. And that was Kofi Capito, Executive Director of the Consumer Protection Agency, uh, telling us what his agency has been doing as far as uh, the bringing into law uh, that consumer rights bill is concerned. And uh, this is an agenda we'll be uh, following, we'll be pursuing this particular agenda on Joy News and all our other platforms here at the multimedia group, you can be sure of that. But away from that now, and Smarties Management and Production Limited has been cited in a rural electrification project deal said to have been inflated by some nine million US dollars. Now the company a few months ago was under pressure for overpricing the branding of some 116 Metro Mass Transit buses. Now, in the latest $92 million national electrification contract, Smarties, Smarties serves as the local representative of the main contractor, that's uh, China Hunan Construction and Engineering Group Corporation. Parliament approved the project despite revelations that the contract sum had been inflated. Now, the minority in Parliament had demanded that the House takes a second look at the contract, but the majority, backed by the government, has objected. Minority member on the same committee, um, Dr. Matthew Pokuprempe, however, disclosed that his colleagues in the majority approved the contract, although there are still some outstanding documentation issues that the Chinese firm and its local representative have failed to submit. But a letter signed by lawyers for Smarties indicates that the company did not take any part in the inflation of any Monies. Now, let me bring to you that particular letter, which is currently on your screens. Now, let me read to you verbatim what it says. It says, our attention has been drawn to media reports mischievously associating our clients, Selassie Ibrahim and Smarties Management and Productions Limited, with a supposed 92 million US dollar contract under the National Electrification Project. Now, it says, uh, our clients dissociate themselves from the execution of any such contract between the government of Ghana and the other indicated party, China, Hunan, construction engineering group or any such entity our clients are not parties to the contract as reported in sections of the media it says our clients have when requested at various times provided merely public relations services for china hunan construction engineering group now this does not elevate our clients to the status of parties to the contract executed by the government of ghana it says take note that we have the full instructions of our clients to institute legal action against any person at Media House that persists in the publication or republication of the clearly defamatory and damaging media report. Indeed, we are filing suit promptly against the Media Houses that carried the unfortunate untruth masquerading as a verified story. And it's signed by uh, Council for Smarties, that's Kisie Jabeng, who's a managing partner uh, for Gray, Cromwell Gray LLP there. So you, you can see that particular statement on your screens now and uh, it has to do with that deal we are told that uh, smarties did have some role to play in there what, what they are saying now according to that particular letter we just read to you and you just saw on your screens smarties are saying that they did not in any way have any role to play in that particular electrification project all they are saying is that well they did offer some service to china hunan corporation but only as uh, uh, public relations that's all they did they did offer public relations services to them but that particular role they played there does not in any way elevate them to the status of parties to the contract between china hunan and the government of ghana as such uh, anyone who chooses to describe them as a party will be uh, making some libelous comments and in india they proceeded to court they're saying that they are seeking the, they've gone to court to file a suit that seeks to bring to justice anyone who perpetrates such falsehood against Smarties uh, Corporation and uh, Selassie Ibrahim, owner of the company. We'll be bringing a lot more on this subsequently. But away from that, the members of parliament are demanding clarity on sole sourcing under the Public Procurement Act, saying the lack of discretion on the provision is making it prone to abuse. Now, the House is currently considering an amendment to the bill which seeks to ensure transparency and value for money in the award of public contracts. The Public Procurement Act, enacted in 2003, aims at ensuring good governance and improved public financial management in the country. It also provides national rules on public procurement to foster competition, efficiency and accountability in the procurement process. However, 
After nine years of implementation, the Act has exposed some administrative bottlenecks. Prominent among these are the low procurement threshold for high spending public institutions such as the Bank of Ghana, ministries, departments and agencies. There is also the difficulty in the application of the Act to commercially oriented state-owned enterprises, some of which seek freedom from the Act because of their independence from direct government control. The proposed amendments seek to remove ambiguities and the operational challenges that have bedeviled the smooth implementation of the Act. Chairman of the Finance Committee, James Kluchiaveji, who moved the motion, said the amendment will strengthen the Act to conform to reality. It will also correct editorial errors in Act 63 and rearrange the provisions in Part two, by the enactment of that part. So, Speaker, officials from the Public Procurement Authority explained to the committee that as a result of the low thresholds, entity heads could not do any substantial works without delays, and this restricts the ability of the entity heads to effectively respond to emergencies when they arise. The revision is to allow entity heads respond swiftly to emergencies when they arise and also allow for ease of transaction. Contributing to the motion, some members on the minority side, including the leader, Osei Chairman Sabunsu, want clarity on the provision on soul sourcing. According to him, despite the existence of strict conditions under which soul sourcing can be exercised, about 80% of government procurements presently are soul sourced. Relating to um, speaker, the resort to soul sourcing and restrictive tendering. It is not for nothing that that window of opportunity was provided to respond in particular to emergency situations. However, Mr. Speaker, we should be careful. We do know that in this country, in any budget, that in budgets all over, especially in the emerging democracies, apart from allocations to pay for salaries, and fulfilling international obligations. The speaker, between 80 and 85% of our budget is spent on procurement. Between 80 and 85% on, of our budget is spent on procurement. And that is why we should be careful. So if you should have any situation where maybe in a particular year, in major procurement, about 80 to 90% of them are due to that resource of restrictive tendering or source sourcing, Mr. Speaker, then red flags must be raised. Very often, it is not done. That's the problem. So if I'm married, you do source source because you have to. There must be an accompanying value for money audit. Unfortunately, perhaps we only have one company that appears to be doing it, but that's an area where, but there must be. The law says you must be. I don't recall this house being given a value for money orders for the Ameri issue. But Majority Leader Alban Bagwin disagrees with the minority's assertion and wants members to study the bill critically before passing judgment. I agree with you. I agree with you. Whether it's the World Bank or the IMF, all of them, they have their interests to protect. We should be able to protect our own interests and not leave our destiny into the hands of any other person. But I want to commend the committee who well, have read the report. I see that they've done a lot of work. They've gone through the schedules. You'll be able to see some differences. They've made some changes. And I think we have to commend the committee. I'm aware the committee proposed a lot of amendments when the first bill was laid. I think that was early 2015, and the, the Attorney General Department was compelled to take it and recapture all the amendments. And so this one is an improved bill, and at the same time, the committee has scrutinized it and they've drawn our attention to these things. So we should take them on board 
and at the consideration stage factor in the amendments. Elton Brobe's report from Parliament. Okay, so on that particular issue here on news desk, we will be delving into the Public Procurement Act. Uh, we've been trying to get uh, authorities from uh, some persons from the Public Procurement Authority to speak to us on this issue today. We've been unsuccessful, but uh, trust that we will bring you that conversation on the Public Procurement Act, particularly on the source sourcing option in that particular act and the caveats that are in there, which well, quite a number of members of Parliament have expressed worry over the ability for others to abuse that particular act in the constitution there. We're taking a break here on News Desk. When we come back, we'll bring you a lot more discussions right here on the same platform. Stay with us.